This is our mate Elise. She comes all the way from Australia's Gold Coast and runs a YouTube channel called My Cupcake Addiction. She has over 900,000 subscribers and over 100 million views, so it's fair to say she's pretty good. She also has a channel in Spanish and a channel in Japanese, Lina. And she's here to show us... Nine fun fondant facts. Tip one, when you open your fondant, you need to knead it until it resembles Play-Doh. Fresh fondant's pretty firm, so kneading it makes it more pliable and easier to work with. Tip two, fondant dries out fast, so keep it covered. Tip three, colouring. Powder, paste or gel colours work best. Try not to use a liquid food colouring when colouring your fondant because it's going to change the consistency and make it too soft to work with. So add a couple of drops of either your colour paste or your gel colour for a generous amount of that powder colour and then you just want to knead it through your fondant until the colour is really evenly distributed. Something like that looks pretty good. Tip number four, wrap it, zip it, don't fridge it. Most of us don't use fondant every day, so wrapping it and bagging it gives you that extra layer of protection and makes sure that it stays airtight for longer. You never want to refrigerate your fondant because it causes condensation and moisture and fondant don't mix. Tip number five, rolling your fondant, preparing your surface and the DIY dusting bag. So to make a DIY dusting bag, you're going to need something a little bit porous, so a muslin cloth or a clean, dry dish cloth, just something that that icing sugar or that corn flour is going to be able to sprinkle through. So you want to take a couple of tablespoons of either icing sugar or corn flour, pop it in the centre of your little muslin cloth, and then you want to just do it up using an elastic band, which is going to make it a really nice little dusting pouch. So a little sprinkle of that icing sugar or that corn flour just prepares the surface and then you can pop a little bit of it on the rolling pin as well or on the top of the fondant just to make sure that you're not getting any stick. You want to make sure that you keep your fondant moving so pick it up, move it around and make sure that it's not sticking to the bench anywhere. Tip number six, what goes under fondant? You can't just stick it straight on the cake. So you don't want to stick your fondant straight down onto the cake. You need something to break up that sweetness. So I always like to put a little bit of buttercream frosting or a little bit of ganache in between to add a bit of extra flavor and to kind of make it a little bit softer and smoother on the palate. So it's also a great way for you to get a nice shape to your cupcake. Cupcakes are not generally perfectly domed when they come out of the oven, so I've just used my buttercream frosting to create that illusion of the perfectly domed cupcake. Tip number seven, thick or thin, how much fondant should you put on a cake? When talking about how thick or thin your fondant should be, nobody likes to have a huge mouthful of fondant, so get it as thin as you possibly can. Keep the fondant moving and a really well floured surface is going to help you achieve the thinnest possible result. So you're looking for a thickness there of about two credit cards. So I just cut a little disc of fondant, a size bigger than the top of my cupcake. And you can see just by using the palm of my hand to smooth that off, we've ended up with a really nice, rounded, neat fondant dome on top of our cupcakes. Tip number eight, the basics of modelling. So the basics of modelling, you start with four basic shapes. You've got a sphere, a cone, a sausage or a cube. Start with those four and you can make pretty much anything you can think of. Now because I don't want to show you how to make nothing today, we're going to use the cone to make a Moby Dick style simple, simple whale. So with this one you just want to make sure you've got a nice rounded head and kick up the tail. As you kick up the tail we're going to take just a knife and we're just going to cut it in half and then just fan it out. So you can see there how taking a simple cone turns into a very, very simple whale very, very quickly. So a little toothpick hole on either side of his head for the eyes, a tiny little smile, and then we just grabbed another small cone of the white fondant, sliced it in half to make his little water spout. There's our gorgeous little whale. And tip number nine, how to make that fondant stick. So when it comes to sticking your fondant decorations down, a little bit of water and a paintbrush goes a long way. If you're working with something that's a little bit heavier or that needs to balance on a precarious angle, you can use a bit of melted white chocolate, which will also act as a bit of a glue. Elise, thank you so much for showing us your fondant facts. Thank you for having me, Jamie. If you haven't already subscribed to Elise's channel, then I don't know what you're doing on this planet, but why should people subscribe to you? Because I do everything baking and sweets. This sort of stuff, cupcakes, cake pops, cookies, everything sweet, and it always looks amazing. It is delicious, and it's called <laughs> My Cupcake Addiction. And if you haven't followed Elise on Sorted Food, then you definitely should do that as well. If you've got any more fondant facts for us, then write them down below. I'm going to eat a whale. Me too. Mm. Mm. Mm.